Welcome, Lian. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. Great. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today, which is going to be all about how to move from narcissism to empowerment. But before we delve into the subject that we have chosen for today, why don't we start a little bit about, why don't we start with finding out about, about you? I can't get my words right today. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what your story is. So um, I'm Leanne Evans and I'm a mother to two. So I've got a 17 year old and a five year old. Um, I home educate and I'm an empowerment coach. Um, I think I went with that term instead of just life coach because of the area that I coach in. So I work with women who have had narcissistic or abusive mothers um, and I just help them to work through their childhood trauma and to kind of um, release the past and to make a better future for themselves and redevelop their relationship with themselves. Um, so I think I came into that because that that was my experience in childhood. Um, uh, not a not a positive start but obviously that's what we're going to talk about today um and it kind of just went on from as i suppose as early as i can remember up until about three years ago it's quite a long length of time to kind of be in that experience um and then the tools that i teach in my coaching today are the steps and the tools that i use to help turn things around for myself wow wow for the benefit of our audience, why don't you explain to us a little bit about what narcissism is? What does it really look like from, from the view of having experienced it? Um, so I think there's quite a fine line between, um, obviously, anybody can have kind of toxic traits and relationships with people. Um, but I think where it crosses over into being narcissistic is the frequency of it so it would be things like um making people feel small kind of always having to have yourself as the center of attention um kind of belittling other people to give yourself that kind of ego trip um so there's lots of things like manipulation um always kind of having control over someone and if those things are quite frequent, so um, on a regular basis, say, I don't know, like daily or kind of weekly, it's a consistent pattern. That's where it then becomes narcissistic because it's all about them mm. and they have a lack of empathy, which is a common theme with all people that kind of go through that. They don't really connect emotionally to the other people in, in their lives. So, yeah. It can be quite, I suppose, as a child, um, which is kind of the, the time where you need that nurturing and love and support. Um, that's probably when it's most damaging. So, yeah, yes. the frequency of it is what makes it narcissistic, because as humans, we all have that. Um, but we don't all show it consistently. Mm. So it's it's a, it's a normal trait, but it's, it's something that's consistent and can become damaging to the people in your life. So, yeah. What do you reckon are some of the things that these narcissistic people are trying to get out of these relationships and how, what need does being this way fulfill for them? Um, I think it, it depends for each person because it, but it normally stems from their own childhood. Um, so it's a lack of self-awareness. So if you do something to hurt somebody else and you become aware of it and you apologise and you kind of heal that relationship or you, you talk it out with the other person, that's quite a normal step that you would take with a friend or even with your child. Um, but for most people who... Because it's actually a condition, but not everybody has it diagnosed so I think that's that's where I try to be careful with the it's not diagnosing someone with um, a personality disorder but I think it's that lack of self-awareness that they're actually hurting the people 
in their lives, but they do it through fear. So mm. for them, they're protecting themselves mm. by um, controlling the people around them, but they're not aware of it. Mm. So I think mm. that's the difference between um, someone who would understand that they've maybe upset someone or hurt their feelings, and then to someone who's um, a narcissist, they would just be like, no, I haven't. So they're very like self-preserving, they, for them, they're protecting themselves and they haven't done anything wrong. So I think that's that's the main difference. Right, right. It's hard for them to think beyond themselves. Yeah. Mm. It must be really hard being child to such a parent. It was. It was very difficult. Um, and I think because I've got um, siblings as well and because we've all got different personalities, we'll all experience it different, even though we had the same parents so for me I just kind of um I I back away from things I I don't like confrontation whereas my siblings are opposite like they can stand up for themselves and they're they're quite vocal um so it just your your personality can depend how you experience that so for me I was just very a very quiet child and from being that quiet child who had such a difficult childhood how did you become the coach who helps people with it um that that's a personality trait that I think I've always had um I actually spoke about that this morning (laughs) um I've always kind of wanted to help people um and even I noticed in primary school and through secondary school whenever I would see someone either being bullied or being hurt I would always kind of jump in like to their defense but it was a lot harder like to do it for myself um so I think that trait of wanting to help has always been there and I wanted to work with children so I did um like child development at school and then I studied music because I wanted to put the two together and work with children but um teach music so I've always gone down that path of wanting to like help others and give to other people um so I think that came into the coaching um so it was a bit of a journey and I think through trying to heal myself that came around yeah what you said uh, about healing yourself is so powerful Liam because okay talk to us a little bit about that moment when when you feel that uh, when you felt that oh my god this healing is so powerful I'm ready to do this work and help out other people with exactly the same thing. It was it was a big moment. So I think I've always, probably about 10 years ago, um, I knew something wasn't quite right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, and then I got diagnosed with anxiety and depression. But I chose not to take medication because I felt that for me personally, it doesn't remove the things that are affecting me. So I've always wanted to figure out what tools I could use to help me like get past the like the things that were affecting me in my life. Um, and obviously being a young, a young mum, I didn't want that to affect my daughter at the time. And so I kind of started working on it a little bit from then. But the I think the turning point came after having my little one. So I had him just before my 30th birthday. (laughs) And I think um, it kind of hit home. It's like, I don't want to repeat the cycle. Um, And that was, I think, when I started really looking into different areas and different ways to, um, to kind of like change my thinking patterns and how I can kind of help myself in order to be there 100% for, for my children. So I think that was the main turning point. Wow, wow. That is such a powerful moment to experience, isn't it? When you look at your child and say, this, this vicious cycle stops right away. Yeah. Hmm. I think, um, obviously, like learning, there's, there's no guidebook how to be a parent. <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was. <laughs> um, but I think... Having obviously my my eldest at eighteen, I was still learning myself. Um, like I went to university and I kind of 
had so much going on that I didn't realise that I wasn't, not that I wasn't focused, but there was, there was like so many different things that I was trying to, trying to do and trying to achieve to kind of make myself feel like I was like doing well. But actually what I really needed to do was focus on, on me to then focus on them. But at that stage, it, it felt selfish, kind of like, oh, you know, I'm a mum now, like, I can't, I can't look at myself. I've got to make sure everything's about them. Yeah, but not, yeah. you just you don't realize that actually by taking care of yourself you're taking care of your children and that was something that I had to like take on board which was really hard to kind of give myself a break in order to make sure I'm kind of present with, with both of my kids mm. that was a big lesson to to take on board yeah yeah but we can only give what we have yeah mm. um I think um, probably three years ago, I came across life coaching. I never really heard of it before then. Um, and that came partly from me. I already had a business, so it wasn't coaching. I was teaching piano and music. And um, I came across a course to kind of help me take that online. Um, so because I home educate, I'm quite flexible anyway. And I wanted my work to fit around being able to home educate. So um, signing onto that course and going through that business course was when the kind of the coaching and the structure of coaching became a little bit more apparent. And then I realized that um, I suppose through doing that, that coaching for me could be something that I could do for myself and you know to fit around the children. And I think that's where it stemmed from. So, and the co the business I've got now came out of that. Mm, so it was a very powerful program that you went through. It, yeah, it was. Um, I think the community around it, it's, it is not, not everyone on there is a parent, but I think most of the women who, who go through it want freedom. So they, mm. they have a lifestyle where they either want to be flexible or they want to travel more. Um, so I think being surrounded for the first time by people that want similar things that I wanted made me realize that actually there are people there are mums out there doing that you know mm -hmm. and they can travel more they can work from home um, I, obviously I was home educating anyway so like all the little I suppose the little things that I was doing here and there that, that this was a way to pull it all together so um, and I think going through that I realized that my own um, self-confidence was quite low, which I hadn't thought about. I hadn't needed to think about it before. Being online, you're quite present and everybody's kind of there. It's an open space. You can't be seen unless you're visible. Mm. <laughs> and I think that started um, kind of that self-healing because I thought I really, I'd started pulling things apart, looking at... Um, the sort of things that would help me build my self-confidence and then that's how I got my own life coach and things started to kind of step off from there really. Mm. I know so many coaches who qualified as coaches and uh, started working as coaches because their own experience of coaching was so powerful as a client I mean. Yeah. That applies to me as well. My my experience of coaching was so powerful that I decided that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I think it's um, not widely talked about. Mm -hmm. I think most people think of a life coach as, um, I don't know, kind of just like a cheerleader seems to be yeah. the, the image that people give you. Yeah. But, um, it, can, it can be quite deeper than that. And I never realised until... I went through it myself and then had to really start looking at my past, which funny wasn't really what she does. She does manifestation. So it was more about looking at the things that you want in your life. Yeah. But to be able to think of the things that I wanted, I had to remove the blocks in my life. So that was where it kind of all came up. And I did a lot of work looking at where my blocks were coming from. Mm -hmm. the negative thoughts and feelings and that's why it's, for me it's a part of what I teach in my program 
because yeah. even um, like our experiences today as adults, even though we don't think it's connected to anything our, in our past, the majority of the time it is. It's like all connected to how we think, how we feel, um, the actions that we take. So all of those things are connected and a lot of our, our blocks come from our experiences in our life. So um, it was really interesting to pull it all apart and to, to look at myself on a, on a deeper level <laughs> and to be able to kind of put that to rest, but learn from it. Yeah. Yes, that is so true. Life coaching or coaching in general, personal transformation coaching is so much more than getting yourself a cheerleader. And if as coaches, if that's the only thing we are doing, we aren't really doing our jobs properly because as coaches, one of the key things that uh, comes into the picture is challenging the people who we work with so that uh, they can expand more, step out of their comfort zone and uh, be more and, and achieve more. Yeah. Um, I think I try to make that apparent in in what I do so the women that I work with have obviously come from a really um troubled background and um one of the things that I've seen come up quite a lot is that they've they've done all different types of therapy um counseling self-help books and I think just taking one of those elements on its own can help but I think what what they don't have is that support. So I think for me with the, the life coaching, I did it hand in hand with counseling. So I had them both together. Yeah. And I think that's where the power in what I do comes from. So I always do try and advocate for people to either be in therapy or counseling because obviously that's not what I do, but that support in between is what you don't get with you know a self-help book. Mm -hmm. um, there's no one kind of to if you come up against something that you don't understand or you want to kind of discuss that's not really there with a book um, so it's about taking all the elements yeah. of kind of um, what you need to heal and to kind of look back in your past but do it in a safe a safe space with someone who understands because they've been where you are yeah. um, and I do think that's really important with the narcissism because people who haven't experienced that find it really hard to understand how somebody can behave in that way. So that, that was a really big um, key point for me was that I didn't talk about it. I didn't talk about it at all because people didn't understand um, how a mum can be like that to their own children. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to um, kind of get someone to believe you when, you know, you might be 10 trying to get someone to understand what you're living with at home. And then when you're not believed, you just, you stop talking about it. So the hardest thing for me was knowing that through doing that um, online course, I was going to have to be like live on Facebook or, you know, on a social media platform. And that terrified me. <laughs> um, yeah, it was quite a terrifying prospect, I think. Mm. I was going to have to talk to people about it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where the healing is really important because without me doing that myself, I wouldn't be able to help other people because I just I wouldn't be able to step forward and to tell my story and let them know that actually it doesn't have to be that way. Like you don't have to stay in that cycle of um, negative thinking and that actually you can achieve the things in your life that you know you you want for yourself so yeah yeah and at the same time when you do this work you share the message that yes not everybody may understand what you are going through but there's somebody who does yeah i think that's that's quite key to show the, the positive side because even though the story itself um what feels negative but I think that's where the empowerment comes from the fact that actually I can stand and talk about that and express to people that there are many 
adults who have suffered that but are probably suffering in silence and that it's okay to to talk about it um and to share with someone who does understand what you've been through um because i think without sharing that with someone it's a lot harder to to heal like to to express and understand your emotions to process the thoughts that you're having i think to be able to do that you have to accept it yourself um and that's it's a hard thing to do it's a it's a process and a journey so that's why i try to make the spaces that i create in my coaching and in my facebook group a safe space yeah. um, so that they can come in and they can share and there's no judgment um especially for me because i I've, I've been there um so yeah it's a place where they can feel validated and feel supported and encouraged to um take the steps forward to make their life better yeah I totally relate to what you just said about uh, people who have not been in that situation find it really hard to understand how can somebody be like that and uh, it makes a lot of sense to me because I think I know somebody who would uh, absolutely qualify as a narcissist narcissistic person god <laughs> it's a tough word to pronounce but but I've known them for many years and yet every time they would do something which only talks to their self interest it just appalls me still and i would say i would go how can somebody do that it's yeah. very very hard to understand i think it it can be and um i think as humans we kind of we want we want the answers and i think we we spend a lot of time um well people people that have had suffered that abuse or even anything traumatic in their life um sometimes you can spend so long looking for answers um without actually realizing that you're not processing the experience that you've been through um and i find that that that's quite common even for myself but it was kind of i wouldn't treat somebody like that so i don't understand like why, why did my mum do that and then obviously it is connected to her experiences but she would have to want to heal that her, for herself like even though my my um i suppose my automatic response is to want to help everybody um but i just found that i was doing that and then i was getting kind of emotionally burnt out because i was spreading myself so thin between friends family trying to help everybody do everything and be everything to everyone and i wasn't looking after myself so i think through the journey that i took to to heal having my boundaries was pretty important it's a big thing i'm still working on it but um it's something that's really important to be able to put your boundaries down with anybody in your life you know and to know what you're willing to accept and what behaviors you know you kind of don't want around you or your family um and as coaches as well i think kind of like being there for your clients and really helping them but not making their problem become yours um was a big thing that i kind of had to learn like going into the journey that i took to become a coach and realizing that i can still help everybody or the yeah. clients that i get i can help them but i don't have to take on their problems and kind of dive into it <laughs> so yeah you bring up a very oh. important point there lian serving people powerfully but not making their problems our own and you are somebody who has made that transition from taking on other people's problems and uh, now not continuing to do that having those firm boundaries so are you able to give us some insight into how how you made that possible because it is so important to have healthy and clear boundaries um yeah i would say um probably the first tip is to to look at how you react to um experiences so um for me what was most important was looking at my thought cycle so i think how um 
when something happens, what's the initial thought that I'm having? So it could be, um, I'm not good enough, or I'm scared, or, you know, my friend's being treated um, in a bad way. And then looking at the emotions that that's bringing up. So um, I don't know, say, and I think naming the emotions is really important. So whether it's you're scared, you're um, terrified, happy. So I think looking at the emotions that it's bringing up so that you can understand yourself, what you're doing, like what your body's doing, what your reactions are. And then looking at the actions that you take from that. So I would say previously, what I would do is that I would just get this sense of um, like wanting to help. Um, I would feel kind of annoyed or frustrated if someone was being treated in a in a bad way. So then my action would be to step in, like to step in and solve that problem. Um, so if it was a friend with a boyfriend, for example, I would kind of come in and be like, right, so you've got to do this and we've got to do that. And I would be the intermediate between the two of them and kind of be solving their problem and not realizing how like I'm taking on that emotional baggage from two other people. Um, whereas by understanding myself and understanding how I'm reacting, I can now take a step back and give advice to a friend and say, well, actually, maybe if you look at it this way, you know, what, what can you do? And it's about giving them the tools to, to go and solve that problem. So you can still support them and you can still be there for them, but it's about, okay, I'm here, but what can you do to go and mm -hmm. deal with that problem? And I think that's the transition that I had to make in order, you know, it's it still hurts to see your friend or a family member in, in trouble, mm -hmm. but you've given them help, advice, support. They can call you, text you, but you're not jumping in the middle to go and solve that problem for them. That's, it's their problem, their experience. They have to, to deal with that themselves. I think that those like four little steps, kind of thinking that and understanding what I'm feeling has helped me to stop putting myself in the middle of everything. And I think that is so beautifully to your work as, a, as an empowerment coach, isn't it? Because you used to be a rescuer. Yeah. Now you aren't doing that anymore. Now you help people and you empower them and you let them solve their problems themselves. Yeah, I think um, that was for me, it's still sometimes you get that initial reaction that you want to jump in and you want to, how can someone do that? Like, I don't understand how someone can behave that way. But I think um, now that I have that self-awareness, I think teaching other people to have that for themselves is then what makes them feel empowered to say, actually, I don't want to be, you know, feeling afraid for the rest of my life. What can I do to change that? And then it's having that support behind them makes them feel like, actually, I can achieve this. And that's what I got out of my own coach mm -hmm. um, and from that program, because I have access to lifetime access to that program and the women that are in it are still a community we still talk to each other and we still help each other so and I didn't have that before I was very much alone I didn't talk to anybody about what I went through um as a child I was always told that you know we shouldn't um take our home life and and tell other people what was going on so having a space where I felt I could do that and grow was really important so and that's what I try to give in my coaching is to give them that safe space for them to actually open up because I think without opening up to yourself about what's happened it's going to be really hard to to move forward to process it and take the steps forward mm. yes we have got to heal from our own story from our own experiences first and then only we can we can't really do anything for someone else. Yeah, um, it's quite, um, I won't say common, but I think what, what I've heard is that a lot of people are told, like, don't, don't look back, like don't look in the past, don't live in the past. And that's something that I actually agree with. Um, 
that we shouldn't stay there and live from our past. But I think in order to understand something, you have to go back and, and look at it and think, what are the lessons that I can take from what happened yeah. in order to process it and then move forward? So that's something that I stress in um, my coaching. And on the back of that is where um, I started my membership. So I've got, I do one-to-one coaching so that people can kind of dig deep. But um, what I found is that some people find that really hard to just do that really deep work. So I think out of um, the importance of understanding yourself, and having that support network um I kind of made my membership where they don't have to talk about the past but we do go back and look at it and look at the lessons that we can take from it and then apply the tools like the thought cycle um what I just talked about we kind of apply that um to an experience in the past and think how can we turn it around and make it positive so that in the present, it's not affecting us today. Yeah. Um, and so in um, my membership, those are the steps and the tools that I give the women in there. And if there's any questions or anything, then they have that support from me that they can just come and, you know, ask any questions or if there's any articles or anything that they've read and they don't quite understand and we can talk through it together and work through it as a community. And then they don't feel so alone. And that's where that kind of grew out of that. Beautiful. I picked up something really powerful that you said, Leanne, and that was making a distinction for us between looking back at the life that we have had, looking back at the story that we have lived and staying there, getting stuck there versus looking back and gleaning the lessons and using them to move on forward in your life. I think that's a beautiful distinction and it is so powerful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of the, the basis of most of my coaching and with the results that I've seen, um, well, it looks like it's working. <laughs> I've had um, just women saying that they're able to, to take those tools and it can apply to any part of your life. So, you know, not just, you know, their bad experiences or their childhood, they can apply it to maybe a job that they're in. And if their job is quite stressful, then, you know, how can they take those tools to to work through the emotions that they might be feeling at work? Because they have to go to work every day. You know, they can't, um, if they can't necessarily get out of that situation, how can they process their emotions so that it's not negatively affecting them? when they go into the workplace um and that was something that one of my clients brought up that she just said she was able to kind of go to work and her boss is quite um quite a powerful person you know like he he makes sure that he's heard that he's seen and sometimes that can be um a bit much for her to kind of be around every day but by taking that little step and realizing that actually his behavior is based on him and his experiences and it's not anything that she's doing to him means that she's able to go to work and do her job yeah. without yeah. thinking she's upset him or she's done something wrong or you know all the negative thoughts that she would have had from her childhood that would come up she's able to process that and think actually that's that's his story and that's something you know he needs to work on I'm just here doing my job yeah she said for her that was really powerful to be able to do that and took away a little bit of the stress that she was kind of feeling every day going into work so yeah what a fabulous result my interpretation is that you are able to bring these powerful results for your clients because what you are helping them learn is about themselves. So you help them work on themselves, help them work with themselves. And so it is not so much about the external events as it is about working on ourselves. Is that the right way to look at it? Yeah, that, that's what I try to do because I do think the event's important. 
um, and acknowledging that, you know, something that you've been through has happened and that acceptance. But I think that journey um, of kind of sitting in that emotion, so, you know, sitting in that negative emotion and kind of feeling sorry for yourself forever, um, you kind of have to leave that behind. So it's like accept it, take it on board and think, actually, this did happen to me but how can I change it now? And that's all about you, the other person who was involved in that experience, they're responsible for their actions. So it's about kind of leaving that responsibility, what happened with, with them in the past and you being responsible for your actions that you're taking right now, because we can't control what other people do, but we can control how we react to it and the steps that we take afterwards. So, that's kind of what I try to um, implement within the teaching strategies and tools that I give them is that we have to be aware of what's going on around us, but we're only responsible for, for ourselves and our own actions. So this whole concept of we have got to be aware of what is going on around us, but we are only responsible for ourselves. How does this fit in with the whole we are all connected and you've got to be kind and considerate towards others and not feeling selfish while while adopting this philosophy um i think it's um again i think that awareness is is really really key because although we can't make somebody do something else but the actions and the, and the words that we take does affect the people around us. So I would say like with my parenting, the, um, the best, biggest example of that is that if I am feeling stressed or you know overwhelmed and then I start shouting, my child might not have done anything wrong, but because I'm kind of in that negative emotion, and I'm not doing anything about it. It's just building and building. And then, you know, they could leave a toy on the floor or do something really simple. And then you end up shouting. Um, and that, that was my cycle. I'd get so overwhelmed with what I'm feeling that my eldest would, you know, come and ask me something and then, or even a friend and I'd explode. But what I wouldn't realize is that by me doing that, I've then, made her feel like she's done something wrong even if, though she hasn't um so my actions are affecting other people but it's because i'm not i wasn't aware of what i was doing it's like i was just leaving it to build up and build up rather than saying actually i need to take a step back i need to have a break i need to you know i wasn't doing anything about how i was feeling whereas now i'm aware that if i'm starting to get stressed up and say mommy needs a bit of space right now Mm. and then they can go and play or we can or you know I'll I'll play with you later um go and do some coloring and then I'll come sit with you so it's it just gives us a different way of communicating with people yeah. so where I'm still taking control of what I'm doing but I'm aware that I'm not affecting my children in that negative way because I'm no longer screaming or shouting or you know being aggressive or abusive do you know so I think that's how that kind of ties in with um I'm looking after myself, but I'm also aware that my actions are affecting those who are, you know, around me. Mm. So I'm hearing lots of amazing things here. I'm hearing looking after yourself, which is something each one of us should do. Every, every person should do that. I am thinking about boundaries here, having those boundaries what are you saying yes to? What are you saying no to? And uh, I'm also listening in about a very high or a very deep level of self-awareness here. Yeah. Yeah, those are correct. Those are kind of the key points that I wanted to bring up. Um, because I think with, with the narcissism, it's such a negative thing to experience. But then also that person is is living out of fear so you know they're kind of stuck in that negative thought cycle they don't know how to get out of it and they don't want to 
because it's kept them you know it's kept them going it's protected them so to them that is their mechanism of living and they don't realize the damage it's doing to other people whereas um for me that breaking that you know I kind of I had that experience my mum had that experience but do I want my children to have that experience so and I think that's where you know by empowering myself I'm also teaching my children you know that they can take care of themselves and that everybody has emotions we all have them but what do you do what do you do with it how do you process it and showing them how to do that in a healthy way so that when they get older they're able to if someone's upset them or if they're feeling stressed they can open up and they can talk about that and they can tell somebody rather than leave it to to build up and and not deal with it so I think that cycle from your own experience goes into the next generation and then the next generation and for me breaking that cycle was so important wow i hugely commend you on that thank you it's not easy to do that i know it it's hard work it is hard work <laughs> it's hard work it's hard work because staying in that cycle is the easiest option isn't it that's that's what has been going on is the easiest it doesn't serve us but it's still familiar and so many people just choose to stay in there a lot of times they aren't aware at times they are aware but it's just just too much work just yeah. out of it but being able to look at those things for what they were and making a decision to do things differently and to break that cycle that is absolutely amazing thank you thank you yeah so um i would obviously i've opened it up so that anybody who feels that they may have a block because um some people don't know I've met, I've met some women who were kind of like, oh, you know, my mum was a little bit like that, but I'm fine. I've worked through it, you know. Um, but really what they've done is they've hidden it. So I've tried to um, make my space open. So anyone who might want to work on that. And, um, you know, many, many women are successful, you know, so we're not all kind of, for me, I just, I hid away from things, but for others, they, they hide the negative stuff, but they go on and they could be running a business. They could be, you know, traveling the world with their kids, really successful on the outside, but inside they haven't realized that some of their blocks may be coming from, you know, if they have suffered from having, you know, an abusive mom or just a toxic relationship in their childhood. So, um, are kind of the membership and the coaching are open to help women explore that um, in a safe space and um, in the membership we kind of break those tools down and I've got a framework that I I work through with them to kind of give them ongoing support and tools because it does even for myself I have to work on it um, daily something until it becomes automatic so it's kind of about that repetition the more you do it the more that's just it then becomes your reaction so my first reaction isn't to shout at someone if they've upset me it will be to be like well you know why did you do that can we talk about that or how are you feeling like sometimes with my five-year-old I have to ask him you know what's going on with you are you tired are you upset are you angry to try and get him to talk about things and then the more you do it the more ingrained it becomes so that's why I thought the membership was really important because it gives them more than the 12 weeks it gives them a space to implement it um okay. going forward and to get support to do that so and there's a lot of power in solidarity and community that's what i feel yeah having that space community where you can just um <clears throat> if, if you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed or if you know something's not quite making sense you can actually think to yourself oh i can I can ask Leanne or I can just jump in a group and ask the women in, in the community like you have that behind you so it's I think it takes away a little bit of um that overwhelming feeling of doing something by yourself 
yeah. um, and sometimes that can be what stops you because it just becomes too much yeah. so sharing that problem and asking for feedback and support um with no judgment as well I think that for me that's so important like not being judged for anything that you you might be facing or that might come up because we all have bad days yeah. you know we all have things that we can work on um and no one's perfect and for me having that space and building that community for women that's had a toxic childhood was really really important so I was really excited and um I opened on Sunday so I opened on Valentine's Day I opened up the doors and then uh, <laughs> I made it our self-love day so I promoted it as self-love and then um, yeah so the doors are open they've only been open for a short while I've had a few ladies join up already so I'm really excited to start working with them and um anybody who feels that they might want to to work on that is welcome to join mm. and you said you help people on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well yeah so I have a 12-week a 12-week program um and it just means that we can dig a little bit deeper um into things that they um, might want to talk more um in a private space yeah so things that they might not be quite comfortable sharing in a group environment it means that um they've actually we've actually got time to work through the issues from the past mm -hmm. and then connect it to what they want in their life now and um they can have that one-to-one -one support from me and um yeah it's 12 12 week program yeah. and i are you taking people at the moment are you taking I am, people? I am yeah i have um availability for one-to-one -one and obviously the membership is also um open i've got um about eight more spaces just like for the founders who join um and there'll be the ladies that will um obviously get that little bit extra for joining before the door shut at the end of February so um yeah I've got space and availability in both the one-to-one -one program and the membership and do you work only with women at the moment I do um I think for me it was important to to specify who I worked with because um although you can get it from any parent any person can be narcissistic but I think the connection between um, a daughter and their mother is different to the relationship that you'll have with, um, say, your son or even with a father. Um, I think how, how that shows in that connection is really different. And I didn't want to um, work with people that I didn't have either experience with. Um, and at the moment, my experience was that connection with my mum so like like really wanting that bond with her and wanting to do I don't know like typical mother daughter things and like how to comb my hair like makeup I've actually learned about my makeup from my daughter <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't know what foundation was and she was like do you not use foundation mum I was like no <laughs> <laughs> was like, little things that I've picked up with my daughter and that bond is different with my son like I love them both the same yeah. but I think that connection and that that bond materializes different um so at the moment I do only work with women and hopefully down the line I'll be able to open it up because I'm actually studying um about positive intelligence mm -hmm. um, and those tools can be used with anybody um and obviously it's um, a seven week program for myself and so I have to implement these steps in my own life before I kind of put it into coaching and I think it's really important that anything that I'm asking people to do and my clients to do that I've done it myself or I'm implementing it myself yeah. so I think at the moment while I'm working on that I will keep it um, only for women um, and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to open it up and work with anyone who's had that experience in their life. Leanne, if you had to share one message for, to people or for people who are in a narcissistic relationship, whether they are the perpetrator or the victim, 
what would you say to them? I would say that um, it, it does get better and it can get better if you want it. Um, there is help, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it. You know, there are others who have been through it and there is support out there to help you um, like grow within, to rebuild that relationship with yourself and understand yourself and you can make the life that you want for yourself. Um, and I think it is just, it's hard, it's hard work, but to keep going, keep going. There's support out there and it, it can get better. It can turn around for yourself, for your family, for anyone who wants support, it's out there. It's not going to be, but it's going to be worth it. It is, it's a hard journey. Um, but it is worth it and seeing the benefits that it's had on, on myself and my children has been amazing. Like we've been able to do things that I would normally not do because I'd be scared to do it. Um, but things like even with the traveling, things like traveling now, home educating, they're small little steps on their own, but together it makes such a big difference and it is really worth it seeing how my relationship has grown with myself and with my children. That's so, that's so beautiful. Leanne, thank you so much for coming and uh, you. sharing your wisdom with us. When we finish, will you also be able to drop all your relevant links just under this video? Uh, yeah. Any links that you want to share to your website, to, to your program, to your membership? That'd be great. I will do. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much and uh, thank you to everybody who's going to catch us up on the replay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.